everybody, welcome back. It's Andy Timmons, and for this next installment of Melodic Muse, we're gonna we're gonna take a different chord progression. This is another track that I created for the in in the jam series for True Fire, which you can check out. There's ten tracks on the in that uh, in that program, and basically it's it's me. Um, you know, exploring these chord progressions and kind of showing my ideas of how I, how, how I treat things. And we're going to continue on this idea of, instead of thinking globally um, of, of just what scales work, uh, I'm, I'm much more highly aware of, of each chord as it's happening, you know, what notes I play, if they're a chord tone or a non-chord tone. So where this chord progression goes from E minor, E minor kind of 7 to A7, a very common E minor progression that repeats, and then it goes to C major seven, and then we have a B dominant seven, and that repeats. So globally, it could all be those first two changes kind of fit the Dorian, but when it shifts to the uh, when it shifts to the C major seven, the C sharp, which is the third of that A seven, needs to flatten to the C natural. I love I love chord progressions. I like when I write. I always I like to give myself somewhere melodic to go, where there's just a slight shift in the harmonic overall structure. So this is exactly one of those kind of progressions because we've got that that kind of Dorian sound, but then it goes to the C major, but still kind of related to E minor, but it's more the Aeolian. And then the dominant when that comes in. You know, we have to we have to outline that that D sharp becomes necessary to really, if we want to hear the harmony, almost harmonic minor. So already, even with these four chords, there's three scale choices. But I'm much more aware of it uh, as a chord to chord basis. And then, like I say, what's 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 a chord tone and what's a non chord tone. So let's dig in and get into this. <laughs> Essentially, with a couple of exceptions, and that little solo, I was trying to stick mainly to just the chord tones, so you can hear, really hear the beauty that just by nailing those consonant notes, there's there's great melody just just waiting for you. And then obviously you, you want to add other stuff to it eventually. But this is a great exercise to um, not obviously just to learn where these notes are, but just to be able to access them as part of your uh, vocabulary. So. That first, on the first chord E minor, so I know that I've got available to me E, G natural, B, and if I want to add the seventh D. So at that point, it's obviously very handy to to you know map out as many of these areas where you can play those four notes. To be able to access, you know that at, at that moment, and then when it goes to the A7, you've got A, C sharp, E, and G. And then when it goes to C major, you've got the C, the E natural, G major, and uh, B, B natural for the major seven. And a lot of times I like melodically, I like to, if I'll be hanging on that E of the A7. Because then when it, when it changes to the C, that's also a chord tone, but it's the, it's the, it's the major third of that, uh, of that chord. So um, I'm very fond of, and you'll hear it just about in anything that I improvise or, or write compositionally. During that chord, when it, whenever it's happening, you're going to, Hear other chord tones, but you're definitely going to hear the third because that's that's where you're really defining the harmony of of the chord as it's happening. So over that E minor, you'll definitely hear the G natural, and then over the A seven, E G natural A C sharp, and now over that C, and then you've got 
the arpeggio for the B7, B, D sharp, F sharp, A. When I put the, the flat nine sometimes. So if you want to resolve from that C major, down a half step to D sharp. Not only in position, work on these arpeggios, but you want to do the single string thing too. And that is such, there's such beauty in just playing that arpeggio on the one string because it it sings in a different way than that. Right? Okay. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you're enjoying the sound of what what knowing these chord tones can do. So take the time and map them out. Every, every possible way. It's not that much information. I know you can do it. And then as we start adding other notes, you'll see, start seeing how to connect these all in a really greatly melodic way.